And welcome to another episode of Techie Burviews. I'm Special K here going it alone. Um, tonight we're going to do another beer and booze hunting with KBR. Um, this is the ABC Liquor Store in Asheville, North Carolina. Uh, we're also going to be checking out a few other stores, but this first one here um, is ABC Liquor Store uh, number 11, I believe. Uh, now the first section we're going to check out here is the rum. Um, they have your typical... Uh, Cruzans and Captain Morgans and stuff like that, but I did notice something that I don't see very often here in Kentucky. You have Goslings up there. I've never seen Goslings rum in Kentucky. Um, Sailor Jerry's, more Captain Morgan, and there's some Bacardi. Um, a lot of stuff we get. We don't get a lot of Adam, Admiral Nelsons in Kentucky. Uh, I've seen it once or twice. Um, it's actually made by uh, Evan Williams, so you think we'd see it more, but we don't. Again, there's some more Goslings. Uh, some Bacardi and Malibu, um, some more high-end stuff at the top there. Um, now, I'm doing this uh, voiceover because they're playing loud music in the store, and I don't want to get uh, demonetized, so we're going to do this uh, beer hunting like this. It's just easier for us. Um, some more Cruzan. Um, the one thing was interesting about this store is, uh, and then North Carolina in general, is a lot of their booze and alcohol – um, is regulated by the uh, well actually all their beer and booze is uh, regulated by the ABC it's alcohol beverage control so their liquor stores are all state owned there is no individual liquor stores so they're all called ABC liquor stores um, and they're in Asheville there's liquor stores 1 through 11 and then they're, only, they're the only ones that can sell liquor now they only sell liquor here they do not sell wine uh, it's only booze so they do allow beer in grocery stores uh, and wine in grocery stores as well. Um, but I didn't see, honestly, a lot of stores that had beer. Uh, we went to a Target, which I'll show later on, that had some uh, beer and booze. But uh, other than that, like Target and I think maybe one or two grocery stores. And I found one specialty beer store. It was super tiny, uh, and it was in a small town about an hour away from um, Asheville. And we'll show that one as well. Gotta love Christmas time. You get these awesome uh, liquor kits with glasses and uh, like little tiny bottles of stuff. Um, it's my favorite time of the year to buy this kind of stuff because generally they're like a little bit, or they're about the same price as a normal bottle. You just get the bonus stuff. Um, there's some gingerbread Captain Morgans back there that look pretty interesting. Uh, I'm just now seeing it in this video. Should have picked it up. But now we're in the tequila section. Uh, this tequila section is ex impressive. Like, I was really surprised about how much tequila they had. I'm used to only seeing, you know, maybe you know, maybe a half aisle or maybe a couple shelves full of tequila. You know, seeing your Patron, your Jose Cuervo, Margaritaville, and 1800. And, uh, you know, that's about all we see in Kentucky. But they had a huge variety of tequila here. And uh, I wasn't even familiar with a lot of these brands, honestly. Like, I, you know, I've seen the the uh, Suarez and uh, El Jimador El and uh, Cabo Wabo and stuff like that, but a lot of these I've never seen before. I wish I had more uh, money. I would have definitely picked some up. Uh, and one brand that keeps coming up is this Aristocrat brand. I don't know if it's like a uh, like their bargain brand, but they have the Aristocrat in all these uh, different alcohols in the store. Um, and I actually picked up a few bottles, uh, but I'll show you the pickups at the end so you can see what I picked up at these stores. Next, we're checking out the Moonshine here. There's a few uh, I haven't seen before. That Howling Man, that Steve's Soul Shine, I haven't seen that one. Um, there at the bottom there, there's uh, Georgia Moon, which is actually made in Barstown, Kentucky. Um, so it's kind of a confusing name. You got your Old Smoky, that stuff's everywhere, especially being so close to Tennessee. Everclear, uh, they did not have a store brand on uh, their grain alcohol, which I was I was kind of disappointed in. And now we're kind of starting in the vodka here. Um, the amount of vodka the store had was insane. Like I'm gonna show you like a couple aisles full, but I actually skipped one or two aisles of vodka um, because there was just so much of it, um, and I didn't think I could talk about vodka that long. Uh, but we on the show uh, here we have a rule where you shouldn't pay over like twenty dollars for a bottle of vodka. So they definitely had a huge selection here, um, a ton of stuff, in, you know, under twenty dollars and under, like I said. But they even had like a lot of vodka that you'll see here in a minute is under five and six dollars for a fifth, which is insane. Um, here in Kentucky, I think we have maybe uh, 
two that I know of vodkas that are under uh, six bucks, maybe three. Heaven Hill's like six fifty. Uh, we can get Heaven Hill, Nikolai, and Taka, and that's about it. But they had uh, just like I'd say like fifteen or fifteen. You'll see on the show uh, or see in this video. It's crazy. Um, and there's you know you got their Shrock and Burnett's, uh, Gordon's. Um, there's a Vladimir down there, which is an interesting one. Lots of flavored vodkas. Uh, a lot of flavors I haven't seen before. Um, like I said, there's another one of those vodkas that I've never heard of. This whole bottom shelf here, I've never heard of any of these. Um, more Burnett's, uh, Grey Goose. Um, there's even a flavored Grey Goose, which we I've never seen, at least uh, where we're at. Um, more flavored Burnett's. Um, those sour Smirnoffs, I kind of want to try those at some point. Um, Big Bottles of Svetka, and there's some Stoli there at the top. Um, this is 100 Proof Smirnoff. Yeah, it's it's amazing. The vodka section is just amazing here. I guess like in North Carolina, they just they just drink a lot of vodka. That and a craft beer because they have so many uh, craft distilleries here. Sorry, craft breweries, not distilleries. They're at least uh, within like a walking distance. We hit like ten or twelve just checking them out. I mean, they have New Belgium here and Sierra Nevada. But yeah, they also have Boojum and uh, High Wire, and that's just to name a few. Um, I wish I would have known they were here, those uh, craft breweries, because we would have loved to do more videos for you guys there. Now we're on to the like the liqueur section. You have like uh, Curacao and uh, other stuff like that. Grand Mariner. There's some uh, Patron uh, that I've never seen before. It's flavored Patron. There's some pineapple uh, Patron, a little pricey at 26 bucks. There's some lemon, uh, some lime, but uh, it's cool that they had it. I wouldn't mind trying it sometime, but not not for that price. Next, we're on to the gin. <laughs> they had a pretty uh, meager gin selection. Some Tangere, Seagrams. There's some Pinnacle gin down there, which I didn't know Pinnacle made gin. Uh, I should have picked the bottle up, but I didn't. Some Seagrams flavored. Um, there's some uh, Bombay Sapphire. Some Bombay East, and there's Bombay Dry. Um, I don't think there's no lets on the top. I don't think I've ever seen that one before. On to the Brandy. Uh, looks like E&J redid their labels. I don't think I've seen those yet. Um, I don't know. I kind of like the old label better. I thought it looked better than the new one. Um, all kinds of E and J um, down there. Some Paul Mason, some flavored uh, E and J there. Some higher uh, mid mid high range stuff here on the top. Uh, there's the Christians Brothers. Some Henny special. I don't know what that Henny was. It looked interesting. Um. Some hypnotic there at the bottom, um, and then we're going on to the uh, Irish whiskey section here. Um, there's a cool Jameson box set. Um, some of the castmates Jameson stuff, Bushmills, uh, just run of the mill um, Irish whiskey section. Nothing, nothing crazy. Now this is the uh, Scotch. Lots of uh, Johnny Walker, Black Label, Red Label, Black Label. They had Blue Label, but it was in a uh, like a case. Um, there's the Game of Thrones, uh, Johnny Walker. Um, there's some like lower end stuff on the bottom shelf there. I didn't really look too long at this section. I wish I would have, uh, but mostly because the prices are a little uh, a little steep for me. Most of the stuff's seventy dollars, sixty, seventy dollars plus. Um, so it's a little more than uh, we can afford for the show. Uh, some um, fourteen, fifteen year old scotch. Um, Some McKaylin, 12 and 15 year at the end there. Next, we're checking out the whiskey section. Starting off here, there's some uh, Colorado and Japanese whiskeys, um, and then it goes straight to bourbons. Um, a few bourbons I haven't seen, um, and some common ones like Elijah Craig and Jefferson's. Um, Four Roses, there's a cool Four Roses uh, Christmas set there. Um, they're small batch, which 28 bucks isn't bad for small batch. Some Larceny, um, a good old benchmark there at the bottom. Um, then there's some like Ancient Age and Granddads. Um, there's some Woodford. There's some Knob Creek. Looks like they changed the labels on the Knob Creek. That's 
new. Um, and there's some Ancient Age, and they had some Ancient Age 10 down there. I haven't seen that one before. This is the Canadian whiskey section. Uh, nothing out of the ordinary here that I, I noticed. Um, there was also uh, like a small section of like Tennessee whiskey, but it was like mostly Jack Daniels and a few other things. I, I, I skipped it. Um, there was a lot of people staring at me in the store weirdly, and uh, I thought I was about to get kicked out, so I didn't want to push my luck. Um, so I didn't uh, record that stuff. Um, some old mill was that old mill stream. I actually picked that bottle up. It looked weird and it was cheap, so I couldn't pass it up. A lot of Seagram Seven. Um, here's like the case with the higher end stuff with some Patron um, and some higher end uh, booze there at the top. I think that's vodka. Um, and they also had a, another case that I didn't show, but this is like their clearance rack right here. Now on to the next store. Next we're going to check out this Target here. Uh, we're going to check out their beer selection. But one thing I want to mention in this video about the liquor store we were just at is actually I bought maybe 15 or 16 bottles of uh, alcohol there. Mostly vodka and some other stuff. And the lady at the register uh, looked at me weird and she's like, you know, what, what are you doing with all this alcohol? And I, you know, I told her we do a review channel. And she's like, well, if you have this much alcohol on you, you might need to uh, have a license um to carry that so they don't think you're a bootlegger and i was like what she's like yeah it's, it's not a big deal she's like if you have over a certain amount the computer's gonna let me know that you need to uh, i have to issue you a special license um so they don't think you're trafficking and moving uh liquor across state lines i was like well i'm moving it across state lines i'm taking it back home but uh i ended up being one bottle short so i didn't have to have it but it was still weird uh, it was a weird situation Anyway, this is Target. Um, they have a pretty good beer selection compared to the one here uh, here in Kentucky. Um, with Target, so there's more than one. Mostly uh, local stuff. There are some um, non-local stuff here, but I haven't heard of a lot of these breweries. Um, I'm assuming they're local. There's like Green Man there. Uh, Narragansett, that's not a local. That's like in New York, I believe. Um, some Oktoberfests. Um, there's some Sierra Nevada. Which the uh, brewery is like ten minutes or ten or fifteen minutes from this Target. Some Wicked Meat, Wicked Weed, which is owned by Anheuser Busch now. Um, that Gingerbread Man beer, uh, I watched a guy come in and get like twenty bottles of that, and then I watched another guy behind him do the same thing. So I don't know who makes that beer, but it must be really popular. Um, next, we're at the back of the store where their main beer section is. Um, this is their cooler. It's nice to see that they don't have a huge section of. Uh, like domestic stuff, it's kind of small, uh, and they have actually a bigger craft section there. I mean, let's be real, Budweiser doesn't need a huge section. Um, here, here in Kentucky, where uh, we're at, like a lot of the stores will have an entire half the wall dedicated to Bud Light, and I don't think that's necessary. It's Bud Light. Everybody knows what Bud Light is. They don't need to take up half the store. Um, you know, leave some room for some other beers, um, and then there's some like. In here, there's some Two-Hearted Ale, Languinitas, and Angry Orchard, um, you know, Sierra Nevada, New Belgium Voodoo Ranger, um, and then there's some uh, Catawaba right there, uh, which is a local. There's a Boojum at the top. It's another local one that I'm familiar with. Um, really impressive beer selection, though. Uh, much bigger than I expected. And uh, there's one more store we're going to check out now. Now this next store is actually in Bryson City, North Carolina. It's about an hour and ten minutes from um, Asheville. This is where we were staying at, uh, up in the mountains. Uh, this is a super small store. Um, like I said, it's one of the only beer specialty stores I found. It's like attached to a camping store. Um, they have a lot of canned stuff, a lot of bottle stuff. Um, they actually have a uh, small tap room in here too. I'm surprised they fit so much stuff in here, but the tap room's pretty interesting. Um, they had some pretty uh, good stuff on tap. I didn't get a chance to try any, um, but I'll definitely be trying it next time I'm up here. Here's a little close-up of what they had. They didn't really have a lot of prices on the beers here. Like, there's one or two areas, like, or they had prices on them, like some of the higher-end, more expensive stuff. But a lot of the stuff didn't have prices on them. Um... They had a few like little little brown paper bags you see down there. They're like they're eight packs for like fourteen and fifteen dollars. 
and they were themed like this is fruit one was like fruit themed one was like sour themed I guess that was a cool idea if you like don't know what to get and you can just get a blonde bag a um, little bit of German stuff there on the top um, like I said again a lot of local a lot of local stuff same uh, stuff we saw at Target um, but overall uh, it was a it was a really fun trip um, I hope to go back there and check out some of their brewery sometime with the guys um, I wish I had the guys with me this time but we were on a trip with my wife um, so we didn't uh, I wasn't able to check out as much as I wanted to and I hope you like this video I'm gonna show hope you guys enjoyed that video I'm gonna show some of the pickups I got now um, all these were picked up in the North Carolina liquor stores I showed in the videos uh, all the liquor was picked up from that ABC liquor store um, I show on there the beer is from the Sierra Nevada Dist uh, brewery the um, little beer store in Bryson City um, I showed a little bit of footage of that and also from their Target in uh, Asheville, North Carolina. So the first thing we got is this Admiral Nelson's Spice Rum. It comes with this little tiny uh, bottle of cherry spice rum as well. This is 35% alcohol by volume or 70 proof and I paid I paid $9.95 for this. Not too bad. Alright next is uh, old Millstream uh, blended whiskey with natural flavors of caramel color uh, distilled in Barstown, Kentucky which is actually right up the road and I've never actually seen this in Kentucky that's why I picked it up it looked interesting uh, I paid $3.95 for a pint so $3.95 for this pint alright next I have this aristocrat vodka it's 40% alcohol by volume made from neutral grain spirits this is also a pint for the aristocrat, I paid $3.50 for this, for a um, half pint, or sorry, yeah, this is a pint, not a half pint. I believe the, uh, like, full uh, 750 milliliter or the fifths, they're like five bucks. Next, I have Gordon's. This is Gordon's Vodka. Gordon's Vodka is four ninety five dollars for a pint. I know I bought a lot of vodka, but they had so many cheap pints, I couldn't resist. Next, I have uh, Relska Vodka. It's 80 proof. Um, this one's made in Connecticut. It's also a pint. Relska was $3.95 for a pint. Next, I have Skull, which I've seen like once or twice here, but I've never seen it in uh, the uh, half uh, for the pints here. This is $2.75 for a pint. And I believe it was a $4.95 for a fit. Uh, next I have Georgia Moon Corn Whiskey. Um, this is actually a corn whiskey made in Bargetown, Kentucky and I paid $5.95 for this one for a, a pint. So I had to pick it up, it's pretty cheap. Uh, next I have Aristocrat Gin. And this was 40% uh, alcohol by volume and this actually cost um, 350 as well. So cheap stuff. Let's see, what else do I have in here? What other treats do I have? Another vodka. This is Mr. Boston's Riva. Riva vodka. It's 40% alcohol by volume. This is actually bottled and brewed in Louisville, Kentucky, which is where we're at right now. Uh, but yet I've never seen this in any of the liquor stores I've uh, frequented in Louisville, Kentucky. This one is $3.45 for the pint. Uh, like I said, they had a lot of pints. They had them out on the shelves. Um, you know, on the show, I try to buy everything as, uh, as reasonably priced as possible. Yes, I can get more vodka uh, in the fist for a cheaper price, technically, but I don't need that much vodka, and I'd rather save a few bucks just buying the pints. So well, next I have... This one did not come in a pint. That's why it's in this bottle. Uh, this is Vladimir Vodka. It's, this one's made in Maryland. So Maryland Vodka. Vladir Vodka. This was $6.45 for a fifth. Not too bad. And right, now that we got all the really cheap stuff out of the way, um, I'll whip out some of the slightly more expensive stuff. And again, um, these liquor stores had, you know, a lot of stuff that we have here, um, but it had like all this cheap stuff I couldn't pass up. Like we don't get any of this here. Um, next is. Uh, Imported El Toro Tequila Silver. This is 40% alcohol by volume. Uh, I just bought this strictly on the fact that it had a sombrero. 
Uh, <laughs> that is the only reason. Also, we can't get it here, but the sombrero was a huge selling point for me. I just like, I was just like, why? Uh, this was this was eight dollars and seventy five cents for a bottle of tequila, and it's a glass bottle, like I said, and it's got a um, sombrero. Well, you know, out of all the products I just showed you, the only one that had a glass bottle um, was this El Toro, I believe. Um, oh, and the uh, Admiral Nelson was a glass bottle. Now, the last thing I got, I swear, splurged on, and only because it sounded interesting, um, and I've never seen it before. The lady at the liquor store said it was new. So this is Cruzan, uh, Distillers Collection Cruzan uh, Estate Diamond Blackstrap Rum. So I guess it's made of blackstrap molasses. Uh, it looked really, really interesting, 40% alcohol by volume. Um, I haven't seen too many high-end Cruzan rum, so I'm assuming this is their version of high-end. It is extremely dark, um, and it was $16 uh, for this fifth, which is honestly not too bad uh i have like i said i haven't seen too many black strap rum so i had to pick it up so on to the beer the first thing i have is the, actually the only thing i bought from target uh this is the target nashville is i found this uh, founders cbs they had three of them three four packs i went ahead and picked it up uh i couldn't miss out on it it was 1999 uh for a four pack which Honestly, isn't that bad for a Founders product? It's five bucks a piece. It's five bucks a, a bottle. Um, and this year they are I'm trying to find an ABV on here. Uh, this year they are 11.3 percent alcohol by volume. And this specific uh, four pack was bottled on 10-1, uh, 2019. So pretty recently bottled. Well, about a little over a month ago, I guess. Uh, I gave one to uh, one of my friends uh, that we met in Nashville. So but that's what I got from Target. Uh, I was really impressed with their selection. It was it was great. So the next I have uh, is we did not show this in the video, um, but I'm going to go ahead and show you guys. I actually went to Sierra Nevada, and we will have a video of that up. Um, it's not going to be anything special because I kind of had to shoot it really, really fast, but I'm going to have a video of Sierra Nevada up at some point. The first thing I got was their uh, 2019 Christmas Jam, um, and this was literally just bottled um, a week ago. So, um, I have no clue what this is. I just bought it on a whim, and also because it was cheap. Um, Sierra Nevada had this for $5 a bottle. I uh, can't beat that for a, uh, I think this is what size bottle is this. Uh, 24 ounce bottle, so that's a pretty good deal. Five bucks. I picked this up. This uh, Northwestern Hemisphere. Um, I believe this one is $2.50 for the bottle. Uh, they were charging 10 bucks for a six pack. Um, again, this is a one I haven't seen before, so I decided to pick it up. Uh, next one I got is this Killer uh, Killer Vice. Uh, it's a Bavarian wheat, uh, Bavarian style wheat ale, and this was I think a dollar fifty. Yeah, a dollar fifty for the single, which is pretty good. Um, also got us some new tasting glasses. I got three of them in here. I'll just show you guys one. So just, we use a lot of tasting glasses on the show and they're hard to find. Um, these are really awesome tasting glasses. So I got these Sierra Nevada tasting glasses. They were uh, $2 a piece, which is pretty good for tasting glasses. Mm -hmm. uh, I paid as much as three or four bucks for them. So two bucks is a pretty good deal. Their gift shop there was, um, their beer and their glassware was cheap. Their t-shirts were a little high. Uh, the other thing I got was another glass. Again, we like the tasting glasses. This is a smaller uh, glass, perfect for the show and doing tastings. I got a couple of these as well. Uh, great glassware. Last but not least is the beer. Now I picked this up in Bryson City, which is about an hour from Asheville. Finding beer in Asheville is surprisingly hard. So, first thing I got was the Stillwater Artisanal, uh, artisanal uh, General Ghosts. Uh, I've had their beer from the party source before. I've never seen this one before. I went ahead and picked it up. Um, they charged me uh, three bucks for this pint. So that wasn't terrible. Um, I've, these beers, I've seen go way more than that price class. Uh, they kind of, I feel like the store really didn't have any prices anywhere. Like there's a few things that had prices on them. They had like bins 
that had like, oh, these are 50 cent bins of beer, and then they had some over here that were like, um, you know, had like six or seven bucks, but a lot of the beer didn't wasn't priced at all. Um, next, I have this uh, Flamingo Dreams Nitro. Uh, it's a Nitro Berry Blonde Ale. I couldn't resist this one. This one was also three bucks. 11 IBUs, 4.7% uh, alcohol by volume. Oh, this isn't even a full pint. It's 13.65 ounces. That's a really weird size. I guess, I guess it's got a nitro widget or something in it. I don't know. Uh, next, I have this uh, New Belgium Peach Kick, uh, a slightly sour peach ale, 4.3 percent alcohol by volume. It's part of their Up Next series. Um, now, New Belgium is actually uh, they actually have a brewery in uh, Na or Asheville where I was at. I didn't get a chance to go to them, I didn't have time, but this beer store actually had this in their clearance bin. I think it was, I wanna say it was like 75 cents for this beer, so I couldn't pass that up. Uh, next I have, uh, I'm gonna try to pronounce this. Uh, it's Rigor Deering. Uh, it's an imported uh, passion fruit um, hard cider, Swedish hard cider. Hmm. Interesting. Uh, this specific can is produced just for sales in the U.S. only. Oh, interesting. This says, uh, serve this uh, with a squeeze of lime, lime uh, and on ice. You don't see that very often on cans. You might actually have to try that. Next, uh, I have a Flying Embers Hard Kombucha Lemon Orchard with lavender, mint, and ginger. We recently had a kombucha beer on the show and it was delicious. Uh, and the second I saw another one, I had to pick it up. And last but not least, I have uh, Saranac, which we've had, uh, it might be Saranac. We've had one of their beers on the show. It was actually one of the first beers we gave it 10, I believe. Um, but this one is their Hop Harvest Haze IPA. Uh, it's 6% alcohol by volume or uh, 40 IBUs. So this is all of our pickups, guys. Uh, we're still trying to work out the kinks uh, in this like video style because it's a new series. Uh, you guys seem to like it, so we're gonna keep doing it. We're gonna do the pickups at the end like I'm doing now. Uh, we're gonna give you guys the prices and uh, that's about it. Uh, if you want us to see any other liquor stores, particularly in the Kentucky or maybe um, Southern Indiana area or maybe even like Southern Ohio, we can try to do those. It may take us some time. Um, the only reason I was able to do these uh, Asheville ones because I happened to be there with my wife and uh, she let me uh, uh, shoot us a few quick videos. That's why I kind of did a voiceover um, during the video instead of uh, talking like I did in the first one. We're going to try to talk during the filming, but it's also really awkward when you're alone uh, in the store and people are looking at you like you're a crazy person when you're going around filming the store because I did not uh, get permission to film. I just kind of did it. Um, but all right, that's been the show. Don't forget to leave a comment. I'm Special K. Thanks for watching.